Chapter 11 The Mustard Seed In the days that followed the burning, all the people of Broken Light Village worked together to build a new house for their chief. This was not a long task, for a Dotson house can be built in a few days if the materials are on hand. It is made on a frame of poles. These the men cut in the jungle. Then the Cajun walls and thatched roof are added. The materials are light and easy to work with. The village people who had cured bamboos brought them for the floors. Those who had stores of other supplies provided all that was necessary and the work went forward rapidly. Kooning had not returned or been seen about the village since the fire. His house stood open and his charms and other belongings were scattered about on the floor, but he had disappeared. I don't think he will come back, the chief said. I think this new magic is too strong for him. And when he saw that Sobat had discovered his wickedness, I think he will come, Paku said. I think he will come sneaking in some dark night and take his charms. He regards them as of great value, you know. By the time the new house was finished, Jerob had started to use his leg a little. Rajan came to take off the bamboo splint at the end of seven weeks. He showed Jerob how to exercise his leg, and he fixed him a crutch that could be used until the leg became strong enough for walking. Saski was now entirely recovered from his terrible accident with the poisonous caterpillars. He was able to help with the chief's new house. The boy felt free and happy. He hoped that Kooning would never come back. Now the coming baptism was the talk of the village. In a few more days, little Vivi would hear and speak like other children. Do you think it will come true? They asked one another. We will go and see, they all agreed. If the God of heaven can make that child well after she has been deaf and dumb these six years, then he can do anything for any of us, someone said. The God of heaven can do anything for those who trust him fully, Jerob told them. Then Saski remembered the grain of mustard seed. He would go now and look at the spot where the seeds were planted in the garden by the rice field. He would try to understand more of what Raja had said about the grain of mustard seed. He had not been back to the garden since his recovery. Fastening an empty bohangan on his back, the boy explained to his father that he intended to go to the garden to see if any fruits or vegetables were ripe for harvesting. Then he hurried off down the narrow path that led to the garden clearing a mile away. Swinging along the mountain trail, Saski thought about God. He thought of God all the time now. Of course, other things sometimes crowded into his mind, and the thought was pushed back, but it always came back, and the longing to know God became stronger and stronger. It was like bending a sapling over to gather fresh leaves from its crown. The sapling could be bent, but as soon as it was released, it flew back to its upright position, with its crown pointing towards the sky. In this way, his heart might be bent to the right or to the left, but it always came back to its true position, pointing towards God. Saski reached the jungle clearing. He saw the weeds and brush were growing fast in the rainy weather. He pressed his way through them to the spot where they had buried the tiny orange-colored seeds. There were plants there. They had grown green and tall. The leaves were spread out in crisp surfaces in the sunshine. The stems were thicker than his finger, all from the tiny mustard seed. The word of God had grown, too, in the heart of Jerob, in the heart of the old chief and his wife, perhaps even in Paco's heart, 
and what about himself? The boy stood, smoothing the leaves of the lush plants. They were good to eat. Should he take some home for eating? No one would see them here, yet it seemed a desecration to break them off. Jerob must see. He must show his father. With great care he dug up two of the plants and wrapped the roots in wet leaves. He set them in his bohangan. They stuck out the top. So quickly had the grains of mustard grown into large plants. There were cucumbers and squash among the weeds, but Saski could not bear to put anything else in the bohangan. The mustard plants must not be bruised or crushed. He went to look at the tree where he had slid through the poisonous caterpillars. It seemed long ago. So much had happened since then. God had saved his life. God? Who is God? The question rang again in his mind. Now he was willing to answer. God is my father. He loves me and I trust him. The grain of mustard seed was filling his heart. He walked back to the spot where the tall plants grew. It was only a short distance. There he knelt among them with his hands and his heart uplifted to the God of heaven, and there he prayed aloud for the first time. When he returned to the village, he went first to the chief's new house. Jerob was sitting in the open door, exercising his lame leg by swinging it back and forth as Raja had taught him. The grain of mustard seed has grown, Saski said, putting down the bohangan. He carefully lifted one of the plants and placed it in Jerob's hands. You mean this came from those tiny orange-colored seeds that Sobat brought here? Yes, Rajan gave him the seeds. We planted some in our garden, and now they look like this. Saski laid his hand on the plant. Do you see why God's word is like a grain of mustard seed? The plants were perfect. They had not even wilted because Saski had wrapped the roots in wet leaves. It is beautiful, the chief's son exclaimed, running his fingers tenderly over the fresh green leaves. Then he looked into Saski's eyes. What has happened to you, my friend? Your face is shining. Today, among the mustard plants, I prayed to God. I trust him fully now. The love of my heart has gone out to him. Then you will be baptized with me. If Rajan thinks best, I will be baptized with you and Uncle Sobat and Aunt Gar and the others. Then Saski lifted the bohangan and went to carry the other plants to his father. It was now... But a few days until the rest day when the baptism would take place, excitement in both villages was great. There had never been such a thing in these mountains before. Most of all, the people talked of the messenger who came from God and promised so bad that on the day of his baptism, little Vivi would hear and speak. On the morning before the great day, Rajan and Uncle Sobat came up the mountain. We have come to take Jerob down to singing water, the teacher said. He will sleep in my house, and you, Saski, may come along with us. You will stay with me, Uncle Sobat said to his nephew. The people of Broken Light crowded around the little group as they started down the mountain. We will all come tomorrow, they told the four travelers. We will come to see what the God of heaven will do. It was a difficult thing to bring Jerob down the steep path. He was able to walk a little in some of the level spots, but there was not much level ground on the trail. Climbing down the rugged rocks was too hard for him, and at last the two men took turns carrying him on their backs. When they reached Singing Water, it was afternoon, and they were very tired. 
When Saski went to the pool to bathe, he found many of the village people there. They were all filled with quiet gladness. From their talk, he understood that they all expected something wonderful to take place tomorrow. When evening came, everyone gathered in Rajan's house and sang the hymns with voices so sweet and tender that Saski was glad for the falling night and the darkness of the corner where he sat, for tears of joy wet his eyes and rolled down his cheeks. Then Raja taught them from the book of God. Last of all, he separated those who were to be baptized and asked them to stay when the others returned to their homes. He wanted to talk to them. Saski joined the group that remained. Rajan looked at him. Do you wish to be baptized? the teacher asked him with a level gaze. Try my heart and see if I am ready, the boy said, returning the teacher's look with steady courage. There were seventeen people besides him. He knew there would be two more tomorrow, the chief of Broken Light and his wife. Rajan asked them many questions about the teachings of God's book. He asked them about their homes and their behavior there. Did they get angry and quarrel or gossip or speak harshly to their loved ones? He asked about prayer. Did they know how to talk with God? Did they believe in God's Son, Jesus, who died to save them? When the teacher had finished with the group, he dismissed them, but he took hold of Saski's arm and held him back. When the others had all gone except Jerob, who was spending the night there, he motioned the boy to sit down on the mat beside him. Now tell me, he began, I didn't know until tonight that you wish to be baptized tomorrow with the others. Why do you want to? Is this a sudden decision? Then Saski told Rajan how he had hated the new teaching, how he had fought against the God of heaven and left the village of singing water in order that he might never hear of God again. He told of his experience on the way up the mountain to broken light. When an answer to his thought of God, help came. He told of his friendship with Kooning, of the deadly secret the witch doctor had entrusted to him and how he had kept the secret until it was forced from him in agony the night he lay near death from the poisonous caterpillars. He told how Uncle Sobat brought the grains of mustard seed. Then he told how yesterday he knelt among those green witnesses for God and prayed aloud. So you see, he ended the long story, the grain of mustard seed was planted in my heart, and now it has grown and filled me. I belong to God. I talk to him, and he talks to me. The eyes of Rajan were wet as he took the boy's hand. You are prepared, he said. God himself has prepared you. You may go down with the others into the pool tomorrow.